Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. It really helps the channel out. We're smashing through the subscribers at the minute, so I can't thank you enough. And a few of you have asked this, so shout out to uh, Big Jesse at True Footy. He was the inspiration for this, I suppose, that he uh, did one the other day. I did mine with a little bit of a twist. I've got a couple of trades in there. So before we do it... Um, we're working from this sheet. We are looking at, in our humble opinion, uh, 53 picks being taken here. Two for Adelaide, three for Brisbane, two for Carlton, two for Collingwood, three for Essendon, three for Fremantle, four for Geelong, four for Gold Coast, three for GWS, three for Hawthorne, two for Melbourne, five for North Melbourne, one for Port Adelaide, two for Richmond, St Kilda will three, Sydney two, Eagles five, and four for the Dogs. So, we've got a couple of trades in this one. Um, first trade that you want to discuss is Geelong do trade their first round pick to Adelaide. So, you'll see that in this sheet. And Fremantle do do a trade with Gold Coast to move up the ladder. Sorry, West Coast move up the ladder. So, that being said, let's get straight into it. So, here we go. So, let's look at the first round. So, on your screen now, we've got this. So, we've got Harley Reid, I think, for me, lock for pick one. I don't think West Coast will trade it. And I think straight away, they'll stick that. And I'm willing to die on that hill. Uh, North Mel Melbourne will do the diligent thing and they will bid on Jed Walter who himself is a worthy pick one and um, that would then leave North Melbourne with pick three so with this one here I think it's straightforward uh, Colby McKercher for me has to go another guy in the conversation for pick one and in my opinion the most balanced midfielder in this draft and one that I think that's why I keep saying West Coast have to ask for two and three. Eagles need that two and three. North Melbourne, on the other hand, I think win the draft here. And I think looking at their list needs, I know people slating me for it now. The mainstream media are getting on the back of it. I 100% think they take Dan Curtin. Now, I could be wrong. But I just think, for me, logically, he is the best player they are going to find there. And I feel like he is just too good not to go. He suits what they need. He suits what they're looking for. I think he's more of a third tall, which suits what they're looking for. With the scope to go in the midfield. And I think when I look at North Melbourne's list and how it's made up, for me, that's the logical pick. Hawthorne finally wins something in this real complicated draft. And I suspect they take Zern Dursmer. He is the best player available. And an absolute go-getter from every sense of the word. I think it really suits what Hawthorne need when you look at what they're looking for. I think it makes sense that they get him a real talent. He'll be wonderful working with them. Doggies. Doggies are an interesting one. They've got up. And I suspect that the reason that they got up against their pick is this is what it is. Right? Is... Literally, there's going to be so much, so much. Someone's going to slide. And for me, Riley Sanders is a definite top five. I think they take him. I think they'll be really chuffed. They need anyone but a key position player, really. I think Riley Sanders really suits what they've got. I think Nick Watson may have been on their board, but I just feel like Riley Sanders really suits what they're trying to build. He's a real, real, got so many options, which is real what... The dogs are lacking, I think, at the moment. They're trying to manufacture that in McRae and play him forward. I feel like Sanders is just the perfect fit. And he's a real doggies player. Match bid. Melbourne bid on Ethan Reed, Which takes Melbourne's pick to pick eight. And as we know, Ethan Reed, supreme footballer. Fantastic player. Um, pure rock. Superstar player. Definitely, in my opinion, just an outside top five chance. With the scope for him playing so many roles as well. But Nicky Watson, the wizard, goes to Melbourne. And I feel like this makes sense. Because I look at Melbourne and I feel they they are missing a player of this ilk. 
Um, they want someone to play more forward, half forward. They've um, had some success with Lockie Hunter playing off the wing and then going up half forward. feel like the Wizard would really suit what they're making and a real exciting player. And there's been a lot of links with Harley Reid. Nick Watson is more of an offensive Harley Reid, but I feel like the closest player you can get around here is Nick Watson, even over, even over Riley Sanders. So I feel like that's a really good selection for Melbourne. GWS, I think GWS, when you look at it, they've tried so many players in this in this key position role, right? And they've been linked with a few players, but I look down the back at them and I feel like this is an area of need and I don't feel like it's been covered enough. Now, he's got the ability to swing and we've seen that they've done that quite a bit the last couple of years with players. They've brought some really good players into this, but I feel like Sam Taylor does need that definite work. Lee Kali is more of that interceptor, and I feel like this is just the time to go. The forward stocks are down pat, and with Harry Himmelberg swinging there, I feel like they'll bite at Connor O'Sullivan, and I feel like that makes sense for me, and I feel like a lot of people linking them with Sydney and stuff, I can see the link, even Essendon, but I feel like Essendon have bought players in that they'll want to focus on. And they've got some young depth there as well. Adelaide did the trade with Geelong. And I suspect that they'll look at Mr. Tex Walker. He's not getting any younger. And I look at Adelaide's list and I feel like they're probably the thing that they lack in such a talent. They've got Phil Thorpe, who's obviously going to be the main breadwinner there for years to come. Who's replacing Tex? And they have so much success with Fogarty and writing through that role. I feel like Nate Caddy is the obvious selection, particularly when they have two picks there. And I feel like Nate Caddy, they'll look and go, right, we can sort that out for the future. Terrific footballer from Northern Knights, Nate Caddy. Should be taken a lot higher. And that'll leave Essendon with Kayla Windsor. Now, I know you might be saying, Pom, how many outside skinny midfielders do they need? I think one more. Uh, and I'll tell you for why. I feel like when I look at As Essendon, I feel like Zach Reed needs to progress from injury. So people are talking about the back line. I feel like they've got the inside depth really covered feel like this guy adds a layer there, a real layer for Essendon. And I feel like that, I, I'd definitely be going Caleb Windsor. I feel like he's so talented, incredible engine, incredible turn of pace, real good penetrating foot. It makes sense. And then Adelaide, I feel like get, in my opinion, the reincarnated Rory Sloan almost in Darcy Whit Wilson. I feel like he is an absolute perfect fit. For Adelaide, and it makes them trading them selections to go up there with a future third, third probably coming back in their selection. Melbourne will be a pain in the butt here, and they will take Jake Rogers. That will be bid maybe a little bit earlier, but I feel like they'll look at him and they'll see a little bit of a very young Libertore in him, and they will snifle him up. And then I look at Melbourne, I feel like the Harrison Petty, we don't know what's happening with him. I feel like that that's what Melbourne will be looking at. And I feel like they'll be, they'll, they'll go bold on Ollie Murphy, which really suits what they've got. I feel like he is an incredible talent. And I feel like suddenly it gives them that option to look and trade into the draft should something happen. We know clubs are circling about him and that makes sense. And then the natural... Real natural choice here for Sydney, and that is James Leake. And he may have slid on some people's drafts, but I just feel it's probably too early to take halfbacks. And I feel like James Leake is made for Sydney. It gives me Dane Ramp vibes, and I feel like he'll come in. St Kilda will look, and they'll have a sniff, I think, cheekily to be a pain in the butt with Western Bulldogs is Jordan Croft. They will match that bid there. I could even see Sydney doing it. It doesn't really make much difference for this draft. But that's that. And they get St. Kilda fan favourite, a man who supported them, Colton Fullstrop, in at 17 and create a really formidable forward line. I feel like that, that is the natural succession who can start across halfback and pinch it in the middle. And Colston is formulated for that 
perfectly. A great selection for them. And then I think Geelong will get sexy here. And I think this is why they've traded. They'll go to Harry Di Matea. An absolute jet there. And a really incredible player. North Melbourne with pick 19 now. And I think they'll go Riley Hardiman. I think he makes sense for them. Um, it really covers covers the selections, I feel, in a real good need. They've got some really good players, two and three. They add an extra zip down back. And Riley Hardiman is an incredible player. And one that will look very tasty in that North Melbourne side. Hawthorne will then have to match a bid from GWS for Will McCabe. And GWS will take Lance Collard. And I feel like GWS would love Lance Collard. I feel like with what they do, they're looking for probably a mid a forward. I feel like he really adds something. Um, kind of like an extra Stephen Canelio almost. An incredible selection. I think North might book the trend here. And they'll cover their bases. Now North, yes, they seem to have Ruckman everywhere, don't they? They really do. But I feel like Will Green is that selection that they will look at and go, this could work. Now, they have got Coleman Jones who can play there. They've brought in Hamish Free, but he's mid-25s. They've got Tristan Zeri there. But then you look outside of that, they probably don't have anyone to come. And now's the time to do it with all these picks in the terms of how talented Will Green is. Feel like it makes sense. Bring Will Green in. And then they'll double that up with Archie Roberts, who is so composed, so intelligent, a natural-born leader. And I feel like he's just the natural successor. Then I can see Collingwood being a bit cheeky here and going Caird and Cleary. Um, I think he, if you look at what Collingwood need, if they had a dream selection, they'd probably look at an inside midfielder, someone that could be maybe really put a bit of pressure on Scott Pendlebury to leave soon. You know that some of the young lads are going to get a position now. Taylor Adams is not there. feel like they'll bid. And then they'll take Archer Reid and they'll book the trend here. And it makes sense for Collingwood here. Because Collingwood have a later pick. Try and stifle Sydney and make sure that you take them out of the game. Archer Reid is an incredible young footballer. And one I feel that's been slapped on by the powers that be. Geelong with their trade up. They take Angus Hasty. Geelong's Falcons boy. I feel like this is a Stonewall pick. And I feel like this is an incredible selection for them. St Kilda will be in. And then they'll look at Ari Schoenmaker. I feel like Ari Schoenmaker here really suits. If we see we've got St Kilda taking that. They'll cover their back end of the ground. My list needs looking at St Kilda. I feel like they want some outside backline pace. And someone to slot across who can play mid forward. I feel like they cover it here. I don't feel like they'll go a Ruckman. Some people have suggested that. But I'll look at their Ruck stock. And I feel like that they're incredibly good. And I feel like they're sorted already. Cowan will probably bite here. And I think that the long-term health of Ari, um, of Murkoff will make them select a Ruckman. Knowing that, looking at the draft board, their next selection here could be really tasty. Now, I think they'll look and they'll see that with Geelong in this scenario, we'll have a pick before the next pick. Geelong would be maybe tempted to take a Ruckman at this point. Right, their next pick. But I feel like they won't. Because Carlton will take it. I feel like they'll t they would take Mitch Edwards if he was there. I feel like that that's a very good, shrewd pick for them. Carlton take Mitch Edwards, who is, for me, the best Ruckman in the draft outside of Ethan Reid. I feel like it's a no-brainer. I feel like he suits Carlton's two-ruck system. He is a very active Mark Pittenet with incredible scope. And Carlton know now that if we can get this out of the way, we don't have to worry about the depth. Hudson O'Keefe being trained more as a VFL forward ruck. feel like it covers the base that they have a forward ruck. Continue the forward craft of Hudson. Bring in Mitch who can play across the ground as well. Zane Takoskowski, the key defender goes to that. I feel like with that, that defender's def definitely ageing. He makes sense. He's a Claremont boy. He's local. Maybe a few picks too early, but I feel like that's a solid investment. And George Stevens, because he can play down back and inside, learning off Elliot Yo, who I see a lot of Elliot Yo in George Stevens, feels like it's a great pickup for them. And then I think Geelong will cover their bets. They know Sandy Dragons is an incredible system. I think they'll take jo Charlie Edwards, really adding some youth to that. Cowton will look at this, and I feel like they'll take best available. And I feel like Ashton Moore there really suits what they want. I feel like they've hit their target there. I look at Cowton, and I feel like we don't have any needs. People are talking about things here we're looking for 
something to add. And I feel like Ashton Moore really adds that for Carlton. That danger forward who can kick with both feet and has scope to pinch it in the midfield moving forward. Richmond, I think, will look. And I think they'll look at Logan Morris. I think he's an incredible little footballer and one that will really salivate at Punt Road, working with some of the best players in the league. Phoenix Cothard, I feel like, is a real strong pickup for Brisbane. Outside can play across the forward. Very scope of what Brisbane do. They like to float them players, and I suspect them to load up on midfielders in this draft and really try and just add to what is already a very talented system. Fremantle will come in, and I feel like that they'll go Cone Sanchez with Lumenau and Lawau going to Collingwood, which makes real sense for me when you look at what Collingwood do. They've taken a Ruckman, I mean, they've taken a key position player with theirs. I feel like this gives them some scope to play around Lau and really look at maybe is Isaac Quinn are going to move up the ground. It really adds some depth, some real youth depth. And Sanchez to Fremantle. Jack Deline to Essendon outside. And a forward, I feel like this guy here has got scope to play three positions. I feel like he's best available there. And I feel like it really adds some depth and some competition for them, which I feel like they need. I feel like they need some of that competition. I feel like Andrew McGrath now playing more down back and then pinch it in the midfield. I think they'd like that. And I think Deline is a really talented customer. Harvey Johnson to Brisbane. I feel like it's a no-brainer for them. I feel like they look at a player here who has incredible ceiling that they can lean on. And it makes sense. Luke... Luke Lloyd, St Kilda, just a pure snag machine, a pure pressure forward as well. He isn't shy. He suits the kind of thing that St Kilda under Ross the boss go for. And then Richmond, I think, might book the trend, and I think they might go Taylor Goad here. Knowing that their rug stocks obviously are sorted for the now with a great player in Nan Curvis. I feel like they'll look and say, can we add a little bit here? They've got Samson Ryan and they've brought in Naismith. Samson Ryan will probably get his opportunities. I feel like bringing in Taylor, Taylor Goad with a point of difference really suits that energetic game style that Richmond like to play. I think GWS again will be the pains of the butts in this draft and they will bid on Will Graham, which Gold Coast will match, which will see them taking a deficit. Chu Giaf to GWS, he really looks like the type of player GWS like, and they've got depth in that position. Taking Lons Collard and Cooper O'Sullivan, I feel like they'll simply now look at best available, and he is an incredibly exciting player, working with some really tight players, pairing with Lee Kalia as well. I think it's a real good choice there, and something that they can slow burn. We know how good they are at procuring child talent. Fremantle, I think, will go what they've done before. Go with an older player in the VFL and Sean Manor joins them as a general forward. I think Hawthorne will look at the GMV Rebels' Joel Frazier and go, I like this kid here. He's got something about him and something that I feel like could maybe really be a smoky for a real solid player in this draft. Brisbane, I think, will take Jack Callahan. He really suits what Brisbane look to do. And at this stage now, you're really looking at some scope for getting better. Billy Wilson, halfback, doggies. I do get a real Caleb Daniel type vibe from this guy. And I could see Billy Wilson slotting into the doggy system and looking at the part. Clay Hall, real high ceiling, peel thunder type boy. And this is one of them ones that's just, I feel like it's the worst best kept secret in the draft. And someone that can play across the midfield and really will give him something. Aidan O'Driscoll to Freo. I feel like that they do need some genuine competitive outside run, especially now they've lost Liam Henry. And I feel like Aidan O'Driscoll will surprise a few. Lightning quick, good engine, and I feel like he keeps his head down. And then the Doggies, I think, will take Nathan Philokides, a real solid little player who hasn't been talked about from the Oakley Chargers, who works hard both ways and has serious X Factor. And working with someone like Tom Libertore, he's got a bit of arsehole in him. And I feel like that could be a real good pick. Will Patton, they've only got pick 70 on. It will be moved up at this stage as teams start to pass. feel like he will end up at the Doggies. Will, I mean, at Port Adelaide, Will Patton. feel like Geelong will surprise take another VFL player. Bailey van der Heuvel, pick 52. And being Mr. Irrelevant, which is horrible to say, Will Lorenz finds his way to the Eagles. 
from Victoria, a very solid, young, talented boy who's got some real high upside and could be quite the... But that being said, that's my draft. Let me know what you think. We will have a live draft on Friday next week with three special guests. Let me know how you think. What did you think of them trades? And until next time, palm out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad